Is your child struggling with decimals? Let's learn how to multiply a decimal number by a decimal number the easy way. To multiply two decimal numbers together, we're going to rewrite the problem so they're stacked on top of each other. And we're going to turn this into a whole number problem. We're going to multiply this one by 10, so the decimal point is going to come here, and this one by 10. Okay. So I'm going to multiply this number by 10, and then this number by 10, and at the end of the problem, I'm going to divide by 10 and divide by 10. Okay. So it makes the problem easier for us to do. So this is really 32 times 15. Okay. Which we can do, this is just regular multiplication. So 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 3 times 5 is 15, plus that 1 is 16. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 1, we ignore this because that was from the previous operation, just 3 times 1 is 3. Okay. And then we're going to add these numbers together. So I'm going to have a 0, and this is an 8, and this is a 4. Okay, so I know that about 3 times a about one and a half, or well, let's just call it this two. So this number is about three. This one's about two. Three times two is about six. So I know a number of 480 can't possibly be the right answer. <laughs> and we know that because we didn't put the decimal point back in. Okay, so 32 times 15 is 480. What we're gonna do now is adjust this number. So it's 3.2 times 1.5. So I'm going to write 4, 8, 0, and this was one hop, two hops, so I'm just going to go in two hops, and the decimal point goes there. So the answer to 3.2 times 1.5 is 4.8, and that's my final answer. So what did we do? We turned this, pro we, we wrote this down, and it, you don't have to line up the decimal points for uh, multiplication or for division because we are converting it into a whole number, doing that operation, and then we put the decimal point back in. And we did that by multiplying, we had two hops out, so we have to have two hops in. If we had had three hops out, then we would do three hops in. Okay, let's do another problem so you can see how this works. Okay. I have a 6.7 times a 0 0.05. So I'm just going to stack the numbers, 6.7 times 0 0.05. Again, I don't care if the decimal points are lined up or not, because we're actually going to take the decimal points out. So I have one hop, two, three. So three hops total. So turn this into a, a problem that's easier for us to do. 67 times 5. Okay. So 7 times 5 is 35. There's the 3. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 33. Okay, so it's time for us to put the decimal number back in. So we start at the end, and we're going to go, we, we had three hops this way, which really means we multiplied by 1,000. So the decimal point starts here. We're going to go 1, 2, 3. Decimal point goes here. The answer to my problem is 0 0.335. Can we do another one? All right, let's do it. I have 4.01 times 1.1. Okay, so I have 4.01 times 1.1, which is really going to look like 401 times 11. Okay, how did I get there? I went one, two, three hops. So 411, so 1 times 401 is 401, and then 1 times 401 is 401 again. <laughs> We're going to add those numbers together. So I have a 1, 1, 4, 4, and then I'm going to put in my decimal point. We had three hops out, which means we were multiplying this by 1,000. Now we're going to divide this number by 1,000, go 1, 2, Decimal points there. The final answer is 4.411. And you can see that's the actual result because I can use my calculator and say 4.01 times 1.1. Now when you're doing these problems, 
initially, it's good to check your answer with a calculator just to make sure you didn't make any mistakes anywhere. Now, before we move on to that final example, notice that we can also ballpark this number. This is about four, this is about one. So my number should be four times one, which is about four. And that will also help make sure that you've got the decimal point in the right position. Okay, last example. I have 15.3 times 7.6. Okay, so the big takeaways for the, these types of problems, multiplying decimals, is that you don't have to line up the decimal point. We are converting it into a whole number problem by multiplying by some factor of 10. This number we multiply by 10, this one we multiply by 10 this time, sometimes it's more. Uh, it could be 10, 100,000. So just to make it e uh, into a whole number like this, okay? So let's do this multiplication. So three times six is 18, carry the one. This is 31, carry the three. One times six is six, plus three is nine. All right, seven times three is 21, that's now a two. Five times seven is 35, 36, 37. Okay, we still have a three to carry. One times seven is seven, plus three is 10. We're gonna add those two numbers together. I have an eight, a two, a six, a one, and a one. The question is, where does that decimal point go? Okay, so we had two hops out, which means we had multiplied this number by 100. Now we're gonna divide this number by the result by 100. So that means we come in two. So my final answer is 116.28. Let's check it with a ballpark. This is 15, this is about eight. I know that 15 twice is 30, okay? Okay, so that's 15 times two. If I don't know 15 times eight off the top of my head, that's okay. Um, you could do 15 times 10 and say, well, it should be about 150-ish and you'd see you're about right. Okay, knowing that you bumped this up to 10. Um, or you can get a little bit closer by saying, all right, two times 15, that's 30. And then we're gonna do that four times to get up to eight. So two, four, six, and eight. So two times, this is eight times 15 is going to be 120. So I know my number should be about 120 and it is. All right, so to recap very quickly, just kidding. All right, so to <laughs> kind of go over this one more time, um, it doesn't matter where the decimal point is, just convert it to whole numbers, do your multiplication, then put that decimal point back in. You fig figure out where the decimal point goes by counting the number of hops that you did to make it from a decimal to a whole number, and then put it back in. Also, this will help you doing the uh, the approximation. So it's about 15 by about eight by about 10, just roughly, rough idea. So you know that when you write down 11,628, you know that that can't possibly be the answer. You have to adjust it. You put the decimal point back in, that's your adjustment. And if you need to, you can always check it with a calculator at the very tippy end, okay? And you see that you haven't made any mistakes. If you enjoyed learning how to multiply decimals in this video, I encourage you to take an entire free class on decimals with me. You can register for free. The link is in the description as well as in the comment section. It's getmath.net slash decimals.